A huge thank you to Squarespace for being today's sponsor. Now, let's get straight into it. You've been sitting at your desk for almost an hour, staring blankly at a page or a screen, telling yourself you're working, but deep down, you know you're not. You've reread the same sentence three times. You've switched tabs without meaning to. You've checked your phone, maybe just for a second, and yet, somehow, you've completely lost the ability to lock in. And the worst part, you're not even surprised anymore, because this scattered, twitchy, hyper-fragmented version of your brain has started to feel normal, but I want you to picture something else for a second. A version of you that sits down and just executes. That's how Ayanokoji focuses. Not because he's gifted, but because he removed everything that weakens it. And what seems like psychopathic detachment on the surface is actually something much more practical. A system of behavioral protocols that can be learned and installed into your life if you're willing to do the work. In this video, you're going to learn about Ayanokoji's science-based focus system built to help you perform with the same deep mental clarity as he himself. The truth is, most people won't do this. Most people stay stuck. But if you finish this video, you'll have what they don't, a clear path and the discipline to follow through. Let's begin. Your brain isn't distracted by default, it has been conditioned to be. Every time you respond to a ping, scroll through some feed, or work in a cluttered environment, you're reinforcing one core habit. Teaching your brain that it should always be on high alert, that attention should fragment itself, and that interruption is normal. And while most people assume their inability to focus is a personal flaw or a matter of willpower, the truth is far more mechanical. It's simply the predictable result of how their reticular activating system has been trained to filter reality. The RAS is a small structure buried deep in your brainstem, and yet it plays one of the most crucial roles in your cognitive life. It determines what reaches your awareness, what feels urgent, and what gets ignored. But here's the key. It doesn't filter based on what's actually important. It filters based on what's familiar. Which means the more you surround yourself with noise, pop-ups, multitasking, and meaningless content, the more your RAS begins to prioritize those same signals, feeding them into your conscious experience as if they were vital. So while you think you're just working with some tabs open, what you're actually doing is teaching your brain to split its focus constantly and then wonder why it can't go deep on anything anymore. To fix this, when you sit down to work, your environment should reflect a single purpose. Your desk should be clean, your phone should be out of sight, and the only window open on your screen should be the one you're actively using. Noise is another form of distraction that often goes unnoticed. Even if you think you've tuned it out, your brain is still processing every conversation, every footstep every car passing outside the window, and that constant stream of low-level input eats away at your ability to stay locked in. If silence isn't possible, consider supplementing it artificially, with brown noise, a fan, or earplugs. Even small changes, like facing a blank wall instead of a window, can create a noticeable difference in how quickly you settle into a task. The less visual and auditory information your brain has to process, the more space it has to think clearly, and the less energy it wastes filtering out things that don't matter. But even in a perfectly quiet room, without a single sound or visual distraction, your mind can still feel like chaos. You might sit down to focus, only to find yourself mentally jumping between everything you haven't finished, everything you forgot to reply to, or that one thing someone said earlier that you can't stop replaying. This is mental clutter, the internal noise that follows you into every task even when the world around you is silent. Cognitive load theory explains this well. Your working memory, the part of your brain responsible for holding and manipulating information in the moment, is limited. And every thought that drifts into your awareness competes for that limited space. So while you might be trying to write, study, or solve a problem, part of your mental energy is being quietly drained. And because the mind doesn't like open loops, things that are unresolved or unclear, it keeps bringing them back to the surface, even when they're not immediately relevant. One of the simplest and most effective ways to regain control over this is to offload those open loops before you begin. Not by organizing them or solving them, just by writing them down. Set a timer for two minutes, take out a notebook or open a blank document, and without editing yourself, start listing every single thing that's pulling at your attention. It doesn't have to be complete sentences. It doesn't have to make sense. Just externalize it. Everything you're trying to remember, everything that feels unresolved, everything bouncing around in the background, 
because once your brain sees that the information has been safely captured somewhere, it stops holding on to it so tightly and almost immediately, you will notice a subtle but noticeable quieting of the mind. But what you do with that clarity, what you build with it, that's up to you. And if part of that includes launching your own project, building your brand, or finally bringing an idea into the real world, then you need to get familiar with today's sponsor, Squarespace. Instead of getting stuck in complicated tools or endless customization menus, you can use their AI Blueprint tool, which guides you through building a clean, professional website in just a few clicks. Though, what really makes it powerful is what you can do once your site is live. With Squarespace's courses features, you can design and sell your own courses directly from your website using tools that are streamlined, intuitive, and built to scale with you. Meaning you can take what you know and turn it into something real without needing a dozen third-party services to make it happen. So, if you're ready to stop sitting on the idea and actually start building it, head to squarespace.com slash methodicalmind and use the code methodicalmind to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Just like a sprinter doesn't explode off the line without warming up their body, your brain doesn't enter deep concentration mode without being properly primed. One of the most powerful and often overlooked ways to do this is through sound, specifically auditory stimulation that targets your brain's natural rhythm. Certain frequencies, like 40 hertz binaural beats, have been shown in some neuroscience research to increase levels of neurotransmitters like dopamine and acetylcholine two chemicals directly involved in sustained attention and mental clarity. By listening to these frequencies for just a few minutes before starting a session, you can nudge your brain toward a more focused, high-performance state without needing to use willpower alone. But it's not just about what you hear, it's also about what you see, and more importantly, where you choose to place your gaze. Because your visual attention and your mental attention are deeply linked. When your eyes wander, your thoughts tend to follow. So one way to train your brain to lock in is to pick a single visual anchor, a point on the wall, an object on your desk, even the center of your screen, and simply fix your gaze there for one to three minutes. Don't try to be perfect. You will drift, but that's the point. Every time your attention slips and you bring it back to that fixed point, you're training your focus circuits like a muscle. And with each repetition, the part of your brain responsible for sustained attention becomes stronger and more reliable. You are not meant to focus all day long, and the idea that you should be able to sit down for six or seven uninterrupted hours and produce high-level cognitive work without pause is not only unrealistic, it's completely out of sync with how your brain actually functions on a biological level. The reality is that your mind operates in waves of energy and clarity known as ultradian rhythms, which are roughly 90-minute cycles during which your mental resources are elevated and your capacity for attention problem solving, and memory formation are at their peak, followed by a natural dip, a 15 to 30 minute window where your system begins to demand disengagement. Instead of fighting against that rhythm, the smarter approach is to build your day around it. So, before you even begin the 90 minute session, take a moment to set the tone mentally with a clear, spoken objective that defines exactly what you're about to work on and what success will look like when the session ends. Then, and only then, you begin. And for those next 90 minutes, you give the task everything. And when that 90 minutes ends and your attention begins to fray, that's the signal for the 20 minute recovery phase that is just as important as the focus session itself. But here's the part most people get wrong that recovery time is not meant to be filled with scrolling. In fact, the more input you give your brain during that recovery window, the less refreshed you'll feel, because true cognitive recovery only happens in the absence of stimulation. So step away, go outside, look out a window, lie down, let your mind wander without trying to control it. If you can complete two or three of these cycles per day, 90 minutes on, 20 minutes off, you will find that your total output increases dramatically. Staying in control when your thoughts begin to spiral involves training in the same way you train a muscle. And one of the most effective tools for doing this is cold exposure. Because while it might look like a physical challenge from the outside, what it's really doing is forcing your nervous system to respond to discomfort without panic. When you step into a cold shower or finish a warm one with 30 seconds of freezing water, what happens inside your body is both immediate and powerful. Your system floods with norepinephrine, a neurochemical associated with increased alertness, focus, and a heightened sense of clarity. But beyond the short-term benefits, repeated cold exposure actually begins to reshape your stress response at a deeper level. 
gradually reducing the activity of your amygdala, the part of your brain responsible for detecting threats and generating emotional overreactions, so that with regular practice, you don't just feel calmer in the moment, you become less emotionally reactive as a baseline, which is something most people never even realize is possible until they've experienced it firsthand. So when you take a cold shower before a work session, before studying, before any situation where you need to lock in and stay mentally sharp, you'll find that your mind is quieter, your focus comes faster, and your resistance to impulse is noticeably higher. You can't expect your brain to run like high-performance software if you're fueling it like garbage. After all, your cognitive performance is directly shaped by the biochemical state of your body. The first layer of this is nutrition, not in the vague, generic sense of eating healthy, but in a very specific, targeted way that optimizes the neurochemistry required for sustained attention and mental clarity. Your brain depends on dopamine to regulate focus, motivation, and working memory. And one of the simplest ways to support that system is by consuming foods that are rich in tyrosine, an amino acid that serves as a raw material for dopamine production. You'll find it in foods like cheese, eggs, lean meats, and certain nuts. And when paired with a low carbohydrate or moderate carbohydrate diet, which helps avoid blood sugar crashes, you create a nutritional environment that supports stable energy instead of volatile peaks. Now, if you want to take it further, intermittent fasting, particularly in the morning, can enhance clarity by keeping your system in a light, alert, non-digestive state for longer. But food alone won't always close the gap, especially if you're pushing your brain to its limits regularly, and that's where supplementation can play a role. Omega-3 fatty acids, specifically the EPA component, have been shown to support everything from attention regulation to emotional stability and memory performance, and taken consistently at a dose of around one to three grams per day, they help maintain the structural health of your brain. Other than that, creatine monohydrate, usually associated with physical performance, is also one of the most well-supported compounds for mental performance. Because your brain consumes a massive amount of ATP, and creatine directly enhances your ability to regenerate that energy at the cellular level, meaning faster thinking, better memory, and less cognitive fatigue over long sessions. And of course, there's caffeine, arguably the most widely used cognitive enhancer in the world, and for good reason. Taken in moderate doses, typically between 100 to 400 milligrams depending on your size and tolerance, caffeine increases dopamine availability, sharpens attention, and helps you transition into a focused working state more reliably. But it comes with a cost, especially if it spikes anxiety or disrupts your sleep, which is why pairing it with L-theanine, an amino acid found in green tea, can smooth out the edge and give you a more calm and stable focus. Obviously, know your own limits and don't rely too habitually on these supplements. Respect for watching all the way until the end. You got this, bro.